Next me, I'm going to bring up, very well could be my alter ego. <laughs> so I hope that actually other people in this room can see him, because that makes me less crazy. Scott Corcoran. Hey, thank you everybody, thank you. You know, I'm up here, and you know, I'm, I'm feeling like kind of a fraud sitting up here in front of everybody, because I'm really more a poet than a stand-up. But if you, if you like, you read somebody your poetry, and they laugh at you, does that make you a comic? Or just a bad poet? <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to start you off with some love poetry. More uh, accurately, haikus of my favorite sexual positions. <laughs> Probably want to get Urban Dictionary out of here. You know, you go and have a smartphone. Blumpkin is most fun it is possible to have on common toilet. Blumpkin is more fun when she cleans toilet first while naked. Blumpkin is fun way to make toilet dirty. Two different ways. The Cleveland steamer. I shit on my lover's chest. Smells like victory. <laughs> the Dirty Sanchez. A trip to Mexico with poop covered dick. The Dirty Sanchez. Everyone's Picasso with poop covered dick. The Dirty Sanchez. My poop dick says you need an awesome mustache. With dick up her ass, donkey punch girl's head. yippee ki motherfucker. <laughs> At furry party, animal costumes with sex. Some things are just wrong. I did, did one more poem for you. I had a granny that was a tranny. She used to spank me on my fanny. Always pretty and never manly, and never forgot to hide her candy. My granny tranny. <laughs> All right, I got a story for you about a friend of mine. Larry was the whitest person ever to attempt to rap. He called himself the White Tiger, but his friends called him Poppin' Fresh. Usually, rappers employ clever wordplay, tight delivery, and some kind of dancing performance to rock whatever house they happen to be at at the time. All of these things were a mystery to Larry. When Larry would get up to write some, you know, jack himself up to write some dope rhymes about the size of his penis, he'd walk over to the Asian kids until they made him feel stupid which did not take long. And when he felt stupid, he'd go walk over to the special needs kids and brag to them about the clever qualities of his rhyme and wordplay. That is, until the behavioral disorder started rapping. Sad truth is, hard rap was better than anything Larry could do. He never went over to the black kids. They scared the fuck out of him. They claimed they were going to get medieval on his buttocks if he ever rapped in front of them one more time. But there is one thing Larry could always rap about, and that was his sexual conquests. Because Larry was a motherfucker. In that he actually had sex with his mother. He'd go, hey guys, it's like 2008, it's not like we're in the dark ages or something, you can have sex with your mom nowadays. Guys, guys. His mom was kind of, kind of hazy about this whole incest incident. She'd been kind of drunk and came back and doesn't really remember the whole thing. But she does remember waking up in a pool of spunk and regret. <laughs> Doug told Larry that his mom was technically guilty of statutory rape. Can't statutorily rape the willing. It was clear Larry would never be a lawyer. <laughs> But for the most part, Larry's mom just wished she would just shut the hell up about it. But that was not going to happen, because he had written his dopest rhyme about the incident. Drop down my mama's pussy on my face, a big grin, but it wasn't too long. Before I jumped back in, smacking my pussy. The law says it's wrong, but I got a bigger dick than the city of Hong Kong. Yeah. All right, we were liking the incest humor up front. I could see by the... Uh, the stone faces up here. <laughs> so we're going to do some more incest humor. I'm just going to keep it coming, just like your daddy used to do. <laughs> Ty 
Tanya was the youngest rape incest victim ever to give birth. Funny story about that. Tanya was raped simultaneously by her father and her grandfather while still in her mother's womb. Now that would have been a trick in and of itself if Keith had not been both people simultaneously. Due to a diet of hormone-raised factory uh, processed beef and several dozen generations of inbreeding, the Jibbins clan had been given birth younger and younger and younger and younger until little Tanya came into heat one month before she was born. Keith, or as uh, Tanya would later call him, Grandpa Daddy, that is, once she learned to talk, was coming home from the 7-Eleven with loving on his mind. Mama, she was still greeting at the Walmart. And Missy, or as Tanya would later call her, Sis Ma, was doing her homeschool coloring on the, on the kitchen table. Now Keith, he thought he was just based in a bun that was uh, already in the oven, but due to his penis of unusual size and the unlikely alignment of both vaginas, little Bubba was conceived. Now Tom, uh, Missy, she knew something was wrong right away. And she was powerful hungry. She was eating for three now. Kind of like a human turducken. <laughs> you know, I like the turducken reference. Nobody got the Princess Bride reference yet. The rats, of it. We, got, we, got, we got a couple in there. So, uh, so Missy, she crawled into her, uh, her toy box full of sock monkeys and Happy Meal toys. And she gave birth to little Tanya, cute as a trailer treble. That's a, uh, a Star Trek reference, the little baby that was born pregnant that eats you out of house and home and destroy the entire planet. There we go. <laughs> I see, I played Conyers, Georgia last uh, week. I find myself explaining my jokes a lot more now since I got back. So, uh, gave birth to little Bubba cute as a trailer treble. Mama! Come on, this fat baby out of hand! That baby ain't fat. That slut's done been knocked up! Well, later, when Tanya was a little older, they gave her a book to look at full of brides and pretty weddings, and she wished she could be a bride, a pretty bride, have a pretty dress and have a pretty wedding. But then uh, Keith would have to divorce Mama, and that would just be wrong. I'm King Spoet. Good night. Um, King's Poet, everybody. Scott Corbin. Thank God everyone saw him. Um, 